Welcome to our second episode on pipe sizing for heat networks. This is a run through of the mathematics behind the spreadsheet. So I'll jump quite quickly to the main sheet which is pipe sizing. Okay, now I'll run through this quite quickly because there are a lot of columns to get through in the 10 minutes I'm going to try and do this in. We have various number of pipes so the first few columns are describing the pipes giving them an ID and a description now these represent the pipes from the plant room past the blocks to the last property on the site so that's the run past the risers up the right last riser along the lateral into the property okay in this column we have the total number of properties the pipe is feeding so the pipe coming out of the plant room is feeding 480 properties the pipe into each property is feeding a single property and each riser is feeding 48 properties we have the minimum target velocity so this is used to select pipes it'll pick the pipe size that matches this minimum velocity or the pipe size smaller we have the number of occupants downstream that's three occupants per property multiplied up we have the daily hot water use this comes from the number of occupants we have the physical layout of the network or of the pipe so the run to the first riser is a hundred meters long has four elbows on it we have the number of 90 degree elbows 45 degree elbows inline T's and branches so this is allows to describe the distances and the, for pressure drop reasons we have the count so this is the total number of pipes of this nature on the site so this is for the overall thermal loss calculations we have the total length so that's the count times the length so this is the total length of pipe work of this nature on the site we have the Danish diversity calculation so this is the equation up here um, and the selected hot water diversity so most of these we've gone with the di Danish down to the very low end where we put the diversity slightly higher as it's been shown in some recent studies it, as it's been shown in some recent studies it can be this then moves on to the calculated domestic hot water load diversified load Now, coming out of the plant room, we have just over a megawatt's peak load on domestic hot water. From this, we can determine the, the minimum number of HIUs running. So to deliver this load, we know what an HIU is capable of putting out. We know the minimum number running. So this, this is used in hot water priority calculations. So while these HIUs are running to, to deliver this load, there'll be the same number of HIUs turning off their central heating load. We have an estimate of the number of taps running, so this isn't used in any calculations, but it's the average load divided by this one. So just to give us a feel for how many taps may be running at full load. The heating diversity, so like the hot water diversity, um, but it also takes into account a reflection of the difference between the heating output in a single flat, which will generally allow for the adjacent flats to be cold. Um, and the output from a building in general so the sum of the output from a building in general so when the whole site is at peak load all ten buildings up to full temperature um, very cold outside the peak load is the sum of the heat losses from the buildings rather than the sum of the heat losses from the individual dwellings and this is also reflected in the heating diversity this gives us a calculated heating output um, which in turn give us the total diversified load. We also bring into account the savings from hot water priority which come from the minimum number of HIUs running. We have the calculated peak velocity so this is the peak load for domestic hot water divided by the temperature drop, the flow temperature minus the return temperature from the HIU in hot water mode. Okay, move along a little. 
we have a column that's the peak percentage time at peak. So this is bringing into account the total amount of hot water used per day. So if we were running at peak diversified load for 12% of the time, 12.1% of the time, we would deliver a full day's domestic hot water load. This is used in erosion calculations. We have the heating litres per second at peak, so this is the velocity running heating at peak load. And then taking away from that the priority, if we have hot water priority on, so there's a few HIUs running hot water. Um, we have a column here, the heating as a percentage of peak flow. So it's showing us here, coming out the plant room, heating accounts for just over half of the peak load. When we get, as we get nearer properties, it's the instantaneous load that takes over. Um, when we get right to the last property, the heating percentage peak is zero because we'll be running hot water and with hot water priority, there will be no heating load. Now we have the heating percentage of daily energy use. So this is showing us coming out the plant room for the whole site, 90% or so of energy use is going towards driving central heating. The peak trickle flow, now we've got no trickle flow set in this example so that's zero. We have the total peak kilowattage which is the sum of our heating and our hot water loads. We have the total peak flow rate in litres per second from the development. So these two figures allow us to calculate the energy flow and the water flow and from that we can calculate the now the pipe area is worked out from the peak flow rates divided by our minimum water velocity so this gives us a pipe area from that we can calculate the bore of the pipe and from there we can get to a selected pipe size now these selected pipe sides come from a table of available pipe sizes that can be amended to suit. Okay now once we have our selected pipe size we can work out the actual figures um, for the heat network so these include the pressure losses so we're working out the pressure loss on the pipes pascals per meter uh, we're adding up the fittings to get our equivalent length the pressure drops on the fittings that gives us a total pressure loss on that pipe these are totaled up across the whole site to give us our total pressure losses down here and in the building. And then we have a percentage share of the losses. We have the area of the pipe, the volume of the pipe. From that we can get the peak velocity, the continuous velocity, a time weighed erosion velocity. So this allows for the fact that the peak velocity only occurs for a small percentage of the time. We have a flush time, so the time it takes to clear the pipe and an accumulative flush time. So here for seconds it will take 24 seconds to clear our laterals and our feed to our property. Moving on to thermal losses, we have a rating which comes from the pipe work chart, ambient temperature, then to work out the actual losses we split the system into three modes of operation as peak load in winter, peak load in summer and peak uh, le and standby mode. We have the temperatures during each of these modes of operations, the calculated heat losses, we have a decay time, so this just tells us how long it takes for the pipe to cool down, 50C. We can work out the total losses across the whole network and then from these three here which tell us the percentage of time spent in each mode we can work out the average total heat losses for those pipes across the network and these add up here to give us the losses on the network and in buildings this is repeated for summer and then we have two columns doing our costings 